I'm talking today with Etan Kalan, who is going to talk to us about the program happening on Wednesday, September 16th, starting at 7 o'clock in the evening on Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. The program is a deep dive into coffee. Etan, thanks for joining me and for uh, agreeing to share your relatively newfound knowledge uh, and love of coffee with everybody here in Quincy. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. You and I have known each other for quite some time, and we've certainly enjoyed coffee together. Um, but when did you first start drinking coffee? I don't think I actually know that story. Have you been a coffee drinker? I know you weren't. You didn't grow up a coffee drinker. I did not grow up a coffee drinker. In fact, I knew very little about coffee. Uh, growing up in a, you know, grow, I grew up in South Africa, but in a very traditional Indian household. So I grew up drinking tea from a very young age. Um, love tea. Continue to love tea. Uh, I would say that coffee came new to me. Um, I was in boarding school. I don't think I drank much coffee in boarding school. Probably when I went to college is when I really started drinking coffee, maybe okay. too much coffee. Okay. Um, but I think it was just to sort of keep me up and, and for my... Uh, it was a chemical stimulant. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's so to help me with my all-nighters, uh, which I don't recommend. Um, and that's when I first started drinking coffee and I would say appreciating coffee uh, and I think I went through all those phases that most people go through. You start drinking coffee. I went through my flavored coffee phase, which I'm not particularly proud of, but I, I've done it. Um, Did you go for the hazelnut craze, or what was your... Uh, what, what was your... the mint phase, believe it or not. coffee, wow. Yes, okay. yes. With the mint flavors. Yes, I, I'm with you. Cool. Um, and uh, ended up drinking, you know, then brewing at home, you know, for the longest time, used one of the big brand names and loved it. And um, there's a big can of coffee that you can keep on the, the shelf forever. Or? Exactly. Exactly. Not realizing that as that ground coffee was sitting there, it was also getting stale. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but that's I started late in life and but I'm playing catch up with coffee. So are you a must have coffee everyday drinker? Do you kind of go in fits and starts? What's your... As, as, have you had, I know for myself, like, you know, I've, I've appreciated, there's been times when I drink a whole lot of coffee and then it gets really bad and I'm drinking too much and I get to a spot where I just have to feed the itch and I'm getting gas station coffee. And as soon as I've sunk to that level, I'm like, oh, I got to quit. So I've quit coffee more times. Like I'm really good at quitting coffee because I've done it many, many times, right? Um, you have you ever decided you need to quit? Or? I've not quit coffee, but that's probably because I drink my two cups in the morning. I do need my first cup and then I follow up with the second cup and that's it for the day. Okay. Um, I have started drinking decaf at night, but we can talk more about that later on. Hmm. Decaf. I, I know you and I have talked about that recently and you said that there's some, some good flavored decafs. I have yet to be convinced. So you're going to have to work, continue to work on me on that one. Well, once you start drinking freshly roasted coffee, then you start appreciating freshly roasted decaf coffee in a whole different way. So, so let's talk about roasting. And so you, you've been drinking coffee for a while and you had, I know that you were, you know, you enjoyed going to a coffee store uh, that is based out of Seattle, uh, which we could, I'm sure at some point we'll, we'll, we'll drop their name, but we don't have to name them right now. They get plenty of publicity and all those other sources. Um, but then you got interested in, in, in yourself dove deeper into coffee. What kind of spurred that, uh, that adventure? You know, so, so, so yes, I, I've tried and still like to try different coffee shops, different coffees, um, different roasts, and especially when I've gone out. Um, I would say during the pandemic, um, we were sitting around one day early March having dinner, the family and we were talking about having more time on our hands and uh, a conversation between my then 17 year old son and I continued, you know, he started drinking coffee about four or five years ago um, and loves coffee. And we started talking about coffee and how much we love coffee in this house. And my wife, Jenny also loves coffee. She's Swedish. They drink lots of coffee in Sweden. And Ravi and I were, my son were talking about, wouldn't it be cool to roast our own coffee? And we looked at each other and said, well, what does that even entail? So we both went our separate ways and started researching. What does it mean to roast coffee? And I didn't know where to get green beans or how you roast, whether you roast it on a skillet on the in the oven, on your barbecue. I had no idea. And so 
we went and did independent research, came together and got really excited. Um, we agreed on a roaster we wanted to buy and bought some green beans online um, and just started roasting and realized that there was this magic with freshly roasted coffee that I've never tasted before. And it's changed how I approach coffee. And um, every morning now, I grind freshly roasted coffee, and that's what I drink. Mm. And I, I do know from having tasted that coffee that you are drinking some exceptionally fine coffee uh, doing it that way. Well, thank you. And so we started roasting, and then we started sharing with friends like you and neighbors and just giving samples away, and people came back saying, you know, are you selling some of this? Are you drinking? And we hadn't really thought about that. And so we're like, well, maybe we'll package some and sell some to people. And um, and then all of a sudden, there was not, I wouldn't say the sort of spike in demand, but enough people that my son and I had to really think about whether we wanted to start a little small company, which we did, ended, ended up calling it Kalan Brews. Kalan's my last name, and Kalan Brews. Um, I know there's an awesome story behind Kalan Bros. So. There's, a, there's a great story behind Kalan, why we came up with Kalan Brews. And I grew up um, in South Africa. My dad uh, was part of eight brothers. My grandfather and um, uh, my dad and my uncle started a, a store, a general store, which was called Kalan Brothers. And the, my dad, who's late, designed the original logo for Kalan Brothers in around 1959, and he hand-lettered it uh, with his own font. Um, and we've always sort of loved this Kalan Brothers sign. The store no longer exists. My uncle, who's uh, in his 90s, retired last year and closed the store down. Um, and then last we, year it was. Yes, and he's wow. still alive um, and, 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 and very, very healthy. Um, and so we thought, oh, Kalan Brews is a great name because Brews is a play on both the brewing of coffee, but in many languages, you know, Swedish, Afrikaans, German, Dutch, Brews also means brothers. So in some ways we thought we would honor um, the sort of the, the, the family and the heritage of Kalan Brothers and make it Kalan Brews. And then my niece, um, who's a fashion designer, uh, a wonderful fashion, fashion designer in South Africa um, said, why don't I use the original lettering of Kalan Brothers and make up Kalan Brews for you? So my niece, who my dad's granddaughter, redesigned Kalan Brothers and the logo Kalan Brews is designed by her. So it's a nice little family sort of thing we have going on and everyone from the family has contributed in honoring my dad, my grandfather, and his brothers. So would they have ever sold coffee in the Callan Bros uh, market? Or did they only sell tea there in South Africa? We sold tea, and we sold, I think, what would be then be labeled coffee, yeah. would be instant coffee, uh, which probably mixed with chicory. Okay. And that's what, you know, I think back then... Um, constituted coffee, but that's as good as we went. Okay. And is there is, is coffee grown in South Africa? I know that there are other regions in Africa, but I don't know if there's any anybody who's actually actively growing any you know quantities of, of coffee that there are now. Do you know? There is a coffee farm that I know of, and I only know about it because uh, you know this, but uh, I'm an avid uh, safari junkie, and so is my family, and I'm also a game ranger in South Africa. Um, so very close to where we love to go in the Kruger National Park, there is the Sabi River Coffee Farm, which I've not visited, but now that we've entered this whole new world of coffee roasting, that's going to require a field trip for sure. Yeah. Require a field trip, and I'm going to bring back some green beans so that we can roast it. That's exciting. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But so, it's, not, it's not a major coffee producer, but it is a tea producer. Yeah. Have you thought about, have you ever worked, have you thought about or, or kind of looked at brewing or drawing your own tea leaves and, and doing that? I, I don't think that's nearly as involved as, as the process for making coffee. Tea, you probably harvest, dry, and then steep, but and maybe I don't know enough about tea either. 
that's my understanding, but it's not something that intrigued me. And somehow this, the, the, the process of roasting coffee yeah. from different parts of the world and understanding flavor and taste profiles based on where the coffee was grown, but also at what altitude and how you roasted it just fascinated me, partly because there's a science to roasting coffee, but there's also an art to roasting coffee. And so the melding of those two intrigued me quite a bit. It continues to intrigue me. So have, I know that there are certain coffee shops that you know really pride themselves in the, the, the skills of their baristas. And it's not just about you know how do they froth the milk and, and, and make fancy drinks, but it's also in, their, in the tasting. And I wonder, I, I think this is something we'll talk about a bit, um, but how, if somebody's interested in developing their own appreciation, where would you start? So, you know, a barista plays an important role. How you make your coffee, so how you brew your coffee and your brewing technique is absolutely important. Um, and, and we all should be paying attention to that. And we're going to spend some time when we, when we gather for this longer program showing some different brewing techniques so people can kind of tell, well, share with, with our listeners and watchers today your thoughts about you know, how challenging it is to understand what different brewing techniques there are. I think that you had a really good point there when we were talking earlier. Someone wants to learn how to brew coffee differently than what they're doing currently. Um, it's challenging, right? You, you search the internet and there's YouTube video after YouTube video about, you know, the clever dripper, the stove tops, the machines, the automatics, the semi-automatics, the AeroPress. And there's no real way to find out what this coffee, what this process looks like how it feels and the coffee it produces without, take, without purchasing it. And not everyone can outlay that, that sort of money. Um, and, so we want to talk, and, and so we want to talk about different types of brewing techniques. But to go back to your earlier question, the barista is important. The coffee the barista works with is just as important. So you can, have, you can be a great chef, but if the ingredients you're working with are not great, there's, there's limitations to what you're going to produce. So the coffee you begin with and how it's roasted and how fresh it is and how it's ground is a key component of producing an excellent cup of coffee. And, and I want to talk about how you take green coffee, how you roast the coffee, how you think about grinding the coffee, how you brew the coffee so that you have a great cup in the morning. That sounds like a fabulous way to enrich the lives of a lot of people. I know that many, many of us enjoy drinking our coffee, but this is going to help take it to another level. Um, I know I've certainly done that with some of your beans already uh, and appreciated them. And, um, and I'm really excited to be able to share these tips with uh, the folks who join this program. So, Eten, thank you so much for, you know, for taking this dive and for sharing your, the knowledge that you've been you know, gaining uh, even like you've, you've gained this knowledge pretty quickly, I would say. Um, but it is, I mean, there's going to be a lot more than we'll even be able to share in the 70 minutes. So I, I love how you've broken it down into, all right, how do we, how do we pick the beans? How do we roast the beans? How do we grind them? And all the different options. There's, there's a lot of choices to be made here. So hopefully this will be giving people some, some tips about how can, they can navigate and feel more confident in those choices um, because and not just letting other people make the choices for them, which is what happens if we just go and buy a cup from somebody else. So. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing what we've learned about coffee and about the whole process and sharing what we've learned so that, you know, your listeners and people who are tuning in can just be better informed as they make choices because I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do any of this. There's a informed way to do this. And of course, coffee, like everything else, depends on your palate and what you like and what you don't like. Well, thank you, Etan. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so I'm much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. So I hope you've enjoyed my conversation with Etan Kalan. He will be presenting a deep dive into coffee on Wednesday evening, September 16th, starting at 7 o'clock on Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. I look forward to seeing you there.